what we wanted to cover is how to make your online content very groundbreaking. So that means it's like, wow, people get excited, everybody want to come. Uh, as well as to, how can you make waves in your industry? Some of you have a lot of questions about like, uh, am I producing the exact same thing as what everyone else in my industry is doing? Uh, many of you ask about how to gain a following, uh, to get a community of people uh, and to have a regular flow of clients. How do I come across as not salesy? But I think that's a concern for every business owner. You're, you're very scared that, like people think that while wow, you're like always trying to sell stuff like everyone needs to be in that mindset that uh there's an ongoing uh process here that means you cannot like uh, run one webinar then straight away make 10k kind uh, it, it doesn't quite quite do it this way la. nowadays uh interactivity is actually one of the key components with effective online uh engagement because if your audience is not uh, interacting with you or they don't have you know in, in marketing and even in business we say right it's like you need to pay to play or you need to have some kind of skin in the game but uh the main thing is a lot of us do not require uh the audience to pay so that means that today there's no point uh, obviously i'm not going to say hey, you want to come and join this thing pay ten dollars it's very weird but the thing is if the person doesn't pay anything it's uh the the engagement is not there. So one of the easy ways to do is to get people ask questions, and it's um uh, it's multi multi purpose because then as a speaker or as a presenter, you want to present things that are relevant to your audience. Then you don't go and like sometimes we assume and we think that wow this is very interesting or this is very useful, but actually uh the audience doesn't think so. So you get them to ask questions. Then you oh okay. So actually their top concern is this. A lot of you may be doing um say online webinar because then your your industry friends said you should do it because everyone's doing it or maybe you need to do 360 viewing or virtual don't know what then uh, you're just doing it to keep up with the Joneses but there's no clarity about how, how you're doing it so you don't get the result that you want you may feel that you have no time to do all this because I know uh, once I start to show you what I actually do nowadays what some of you may react and go like wow this uh, is like it's like, like, kinda like one, one full time job like that uh, and what I want to point out here is this, that a lot of us actually are spending a lot of time on activities that may not be growth oriented or may not be sustaining oriented. So that means you may be like firefighting in your business, but those activity doesn't move you forward. And especially if you feel the last one to two months is like on a, it's like, how to say, uh, you walk one direction and then the scenery not very nice. Then you look forward, you see the scenery even more not nice. Then the question is why we keep going in the same direction. But then uh, what we have, what we are trying to explain here is that if uh, the irony is that because we spend a lot of time doing those uh, not useful things, uh, we end up have the excuse of no time to do the things that are actually growth and sustaining. Okay, So I need to say this right from the outset because otherwise a lot of people may feel that, wow, this marketing thing is a full-time thing. I have a full-time job, like, then I haven't got time to do all this. Yeah, so then uh, basically we don't want to keep walking in the wrong direction. Nah. We begin uh, with a simple uh, scenario. If you imagine this during this COVID period, you all watch YouTube video, right? So imagine you're watching a longish YouTube video. Maybe it's like two hours or whatever. Have you noticed that as you're watching the YouTube video, sometimes you get interrupted by an uh, advertisement. So maybe you're watching something about furniture or something interesting about design. And then, then they tell you add in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Then basket, this ad starts playing, right? It's like, uh, have... What, what do you all feel? Uh, can, can, we, can we open the chat box and can you all tell me what is the first emotion that come to your mind when the ads start playing? Yeah, either ignore, interrupted, frustrating, who is annoyed? Who thinks it's like quite irritating? Uh? This little example by itself uh, actually teach us a very important lesson about online marketing. Because if you think about it, right, who put more effort into creating the online video? Is it the guy who created a two-hour video? Or is it the guy who only created a 30-second advertisement? Of course, I'm not saying the ad doesn't take effort. Lah, but the thing is, somebody created two hours of entertainment that needs to be educational, must be that it is educational and it's interesting and relevant to you. That's why you bother to spend two hours to watch it. Lah. But the guy who spent 30 seconds to make an advertisement is very clear what is his intention. When you give, people want to pay attention. When you ask people, when it's very clear your content is designed to make people spend money on it, people want to skip your thing. Which is why some of you have been asking why some of the webinars and stuff, nobody want to attend. Because the audience is very smart. They know you want them to spend money, then they won't come already. So it needs to be, uh, this is very, very important. And, uh, and so uh, the, oh, the other thing I wanted to say is that, do you know in YouTube, if you have a lot of people follow your video, YouTube actually pay you money. Eh? But then if you want to sell things to their customers, uh, they charge you money. Eh? So this is actually a very important way to think about the money-making dynamic. And uh, so as we look at social media marketing, uh, it's a lot more than what you actually do 
per se, but the mindset behind the marketing. Most people, it, it, and what I tell a lot of people is this is social media, it's not sales media. So therefore, the, the purpose of doing social media cannot be for sales. He said he want to build awareness. Then when me and Joe asked him, what kind of awareness do you want to build? Then he said the kind of awareness that leads to leads and sales. Okay, so that means you realize that when you want to build awareness and on one hand, it was, this is not about one or two members. You realize actually across the industry is like that. Everyone's, they say they want to build awareness, but actually their motivations, I want the people to buy things. So this is where you want to be careful that your advertising does not come across as um as an ad. No? So you find that when your post is like an advertisement, people just want to skip your thing. Okay, so then uh, there's, a, there's a key concept that we need everyone to agree first and foremost, and it's a very difficult concept to accept, okay? First thing, can you accept that 99% of the people who view your stuff will not buy your shit? Think about it, yeah? That means 100 people view your post, 100 people buy, watch your video or come to your webinar, they will not buy. Okay, and that's, that's the part that a lot of people, it goes against this idea of ROI. Because many of you think that, ah, basket, I need to spend not just time, eh, but money and effort. Eh. I got to spend an entire day build one video, you know. Then like that, if, if 100 people watch only one person buy, then like that, the ROI sucks. Ma. But if you think about it, right, nowadays in social media, the successful ones, you, you see like those musicians, like those Namwi, that kind, right? They post one video can be 17 million people watch the video. How many people do you think actually pay for pay for the, the music? Actually, it's less than 1%. 17 million people watch. Uh, 1% uh, is 170,000 people. Do you think 170,000 people actually pay even one cent for his music? The answer is no, you know. That's the crazy part. Eh? Let's talk a bit of numbers here, okay? That means if right now I tell you all that uh, I get a lot of views and some of you may be scratching head and going like, yeah, but me is getting a lot of all this referral, right? But then they go and watch her webinar. But they... A lot of you, like for example, some of you send your friends to me and you realize that your friends watch the six hours. After that, they never buy anything. But May seems to be very happy. Like I'm not upset that I didn't get any done deal. No. Because the funny thing here is that they are just part of the 99% of the people. I just need that 99%. Okay, if you think about it, right? During this COVID period, you probably watched more than 100 videos. The question you need to ask yourself is, did you buy any of those videos? Fact is, probably, I bet if you are, not even one. You watch 100 videos, you yourself never buy it. Then it doesn't make any sense that you post one video and you, you see 40 people watch your video and you expect them to buy, right? There's something wrong with that mindset, Ricky. Okay, so that means this is something uh, we must establish right from the start because if you all cannot accept that, uh, really, uh, you'll need to get off this, this call, really. Because whatever I say from here onwards, uh, you will be very irritated with me, really. Do not be salesy. It's simply just don't be salesy. Yo. Just give everything away for free. So that means for six hours, just tell them whatever. You don't need to do six hours. Lah. Me, just like a talk. But the thing is, you can do a 40-minute thing and then just tell them. When you talk about a context, right, it makes very important sense to first pay attention to who is your customer. So in my case, um, you, you know, you want to be quite... To, to me right now, the biggest problem that my customers are facing is that they don't know what to do about their career. Be it a business owner or an employee, everybody is like, well, I'm not sure my income is going to be okay. So my entire webinar is about that. And I only do that. The, the first question you need to ask yourself is, your target audience, what is their biggest problem right now? What is their biggest problem? So then you, you create a webinar. It can be a webinar, it can be article, it can be video, it doesn't matter. But the main thing is you want people to pay attention to your thing. You have to give them something that is valuable to them. That is not product-based, but it's more like how you can help them. That's, that's, that's super important. Then the other question about the technical concepts. Because all of us here, are we are experts in our domain. And uh, the thing here is, uh, uh, you all know uh, my topic has always been this COVID, uh, how you're going to uh, adjust your business. But you're, if you think about it, me is not a business coach. Right? Me is an astrologer. Ma. So then the thing is, why, how, how do I, you know, how, how to reconcile that? If you all want to see uh, exactly how technical astrology can be, uh, it's, uh, uh, I show you all how, how technical it is. Uh. Some of you have we've been chapter mates for a while, but you actually have no idea what an astrological chart looks like. So that means this thing is very, very complex. I'm an expert at reading this thing. And it is so complex that, can you see all these numbers? It's, astrology is very technical. But the, in fact, many of you on this webinar have attended my, my six-hour free um, audience webinar. Do I even show this to them? I don't. Because if I talk about this, all these numbers, uh, I talk for 30 seconds, everybody log off already because this is so boring and nobody knows what I'm talking about. 
So that means the videos that you are creating cannot be product based. Can you imagine if my webinar, then I tell you, this is how we calculate uh, transits and progressions and solar eclipse. I tell you, he two minutes log off already. Uh, thanks, May, for sharing that he disappeared already. <laughs> but if I say, now it's COVID, you have two daughters that are in their 20s. Do they have trouble finding job? Uh, I tell you, he go and sit there for six hours. You see, I mean, so it has to be a problem. I need to think right now, if a man in his 50s and close to 60 years old, what problem is he facing right now? Content is context. So then uh, you, you also need to consider, uh, I think Joel shared this before, a uh, key question is what business are you in? That means you need to decide, uh, are, you, are you in the business of financial planning or are you in the business of selling insurance? It's not the same thing. Because if right now you are in the business of financial planning, you can go do a, a video, a series of videos about tips to, that anybody can apply for financial planning. And you do it without the intention of selling insurance. Because the moment your video becomes about selling insurance, then you are lying when you say you're in the business of financial planning. It's not the same thing. Yeah. So that means uh, I'm not in the business of selling astrology consultation. I'm in the business of using astrology in a, in a way that the common man can understand how to use this information. Then your webinar must be about it. Then you must have that integrity to stay with it. Otherwise, the audience is very clever and they know that you're trying to sell them something. How to build community. So you see, uh, community is just a longer version of a webinar. So that means instead of you talking to your customer for 15 minutes, a community simply means that you are supporting them over a period of time. So that's a very easy way of explaining what a community is. Then, um, So the question is, what are the, what are the information or the service that you can prov provide to your customer over a period of time? So that means rather than think about one topic that you can help them, uh, you need to think about, say, in, in a six-month or one-year period, what are some of the problems that your customer is going to be facing? So that at, at, at regular intervals that you are organizing either activities or sharing or, or whatever that allows these people to, to stick with you. Because it cannot be a community. Uh, this, this is what a community is not, okay? It is not a captive audience for you to sell things to. This is very important to establish right from the start because a lot of you are like, uh, I want to build a community so I can influence their purchase decision. Then, then you are thinking, then it's like, imagine right now, uh, if you ask me to join your community and I know that you just want to put me in a locked room so that you can sell me shit, uh, I tell you no one's going to join your community. It makes no sense, man. You yourself won't join. So how do you make uh, content that makes people like grab their attention? So then if we go back to, if 99% of the people are are not exactly the right customer. So that means they won't buy one. They come and pick up free stuff. And so that means if you accept that only 1% of the viewers are your clients, then you find that now it's qualification really. As a business owner, most of us, the old way, uh, those of you who have attended my webinar, you know I talk about the earth to air mindset. The earth mindset is if got 1,000 people watch your webinar, you try to close as many as possible. In the air era, the main mindset change is that you want to filter off uh, the 99% not suitable people. So the whole idea is that you turn the not interested people away because the world got a lot of people, 世界很多人. And if it's pos technically possible to have all 7 billion people watching your webinar, you want to close all 7 billion, it makes no sense. Right? So you start to filter until you only get the ones that you want. Okay, so then first thing is that you need to identify and qualify uh, who exactly is the customer that you want. And then you must have the guts uh, to start turning away all those people that you don't want. In fact, the more you do that, the, the more qualified your customer base are. How do you think I get all these people to email me? It's because I'm very specific that if you are not this category, you don't email me. Then all those who are the category one, they all want to email me really. It's, it's, it, that's the way this works. So then, um, for example, when you do targeting, I, I use my own trade as an example. In, in general, astrologers, uh, in fact, that day I did a one-to-one -one with, uh, with James. And he told me that he had a certain idea about astrology before getting to know me in, in Enterprise Chapter. And he said uh, he just thought it was like superstition or it's like all these uh, fortune telling things. So this is the industry norm. And this is an a exercise that all of us can do. Ask yourself, what is the industry norm in your trade? And especially useful is to pick up all those nasty words that people always say about your trade. So in my trade, it's like superstitious, la, doomsayer, la, fortune telling. La. Then, it, then you need to ex ask yourself, uh, are, are you belong in that category? Because if you are not, then it's very useful to, then you want to talk about stand out, right? Then this is how you stand out. Because if you think about it, uh, I'm ultra targeted. Astrology, usually people want to get to it for compatibility. They want to know about their boyfriend, their girlfriend, whether this boy like me or not. But here's the thing, I don't do dating. 
I don't do couples. I don't do parent-child relationship. I don't do luck. I don't do fate. I don't do destiny. So all these words I dislike about my own trade, I never use those words. So then it's quite useful if you all think about some of us are in trades that have this kind of like, for lack of a better word, like a nasty reputation. It's especially if like, so for example, I, I can see Russell's face looking at me. It's like loan people, it, the loan industry has a certain reputation about it. You know, it's the along thing. And then it, insurance is another one, always scanner one. Like people want to avoid the insurance agent, right? Property agent, another one. So then there are a lot of, uh, you need to be very honest about your trade. What do people not like about what about people who do the work that you do? Then it is the onus is on us to prove to people that you are not like that. So then this is one of the ways. And the irony is if you start to repeat what other people in your trade is doing, uh, you are just playing into their stereotype. Eh? And that's very sad. Then of course your marketing doesn't work and nobody will click. And uh, so that's why in the in this mindset change, uh, it is uh, the difference between greed and service. Because if we are very clear, who is the target audience we are serving? I know that I don't do well with all those like whether this boy like me or not. I got no patience for these people. I work best with business owners, so therefore I I only filter out for people who care about their careers because I can service them best. Then, but the thing is, I can also be greedy, ah, because the, the fact is, if I want to do boyfriend, girlfriend, I can close double the number of people. But to me, it's like, wow, well, look, I only have 24 hours a day. So then I don't bother with that group at all. And if there are other astrologers who want to take it, I'm fine, because I can't, I can't swallow all this anyway. Rather than ask, how can I stand out? So if you think about that question, it's very self-focused. Like, how can I stand out from the competition? A good way of thinking about this, how does your client stand out? Because if you think about it, uh, all of you here are business owners and your profile is not the usual profile of what we would call an astrologer's client. Most astrologers deal with Jia Ting Zhu Fu and all those like not, not like very superstitious kind of people. The, the people who are your kind of profile are usually not an astrologer's client. So then if I ask myself, how do my clients stand out is that they are educated, they are smart, they run businesses and they are not those lie on the floor and please help me that they are not that kind. So that's why if you are very clear how your client is different from other people's clients. So for example, especially trades like insurance and property. If Aaron's clients is exactly the same as another property agent's clients, that's why because your clients don't stand out, that's why you cannot stand out. So it's a good way to think about how are your clients different from other people's clients. Yeah, okay, so then, uh, and also, of course, when you want to run an event or a video, you need to tell people like how, how to make what, why is your webinar different from other people's webinar? So then, uh, same thing, you can actually, now everybody's doing webinar, everyone's doing video. It's quite useful to go and watch other people's things, right? And ask yourself, uh, what do you think you don't really like about what they, what they, what they post? Anyway, they post for free, you go and see that, right? What you don't like, or you feel that maybe they could have given more, or maybe you, some people hold back, like they have 10 pieces of information, they only give three. Then after they say, oh, you want the other 70% you pay first. So if there's something about it that you feel like mm, the guy like not very generous, then the question is, can you be that generous guy? Lah? Okay, so then uh, the question is, can we now lead a movement to the alternative? Because if your industry is famous for holding back information, how about you be the guy who just gives law? Then that will straight away help you stand out already. And so social media, one of the key concepts here is leadership. Because you know the concept of follow. But you want people to follow you, then you must lead. So that means if you are not a leader, people will not follow you. If you say the same thing as what other people are saying, then there's no point to follow you because you say the same thing as everyone else. What if I don't have professional equipment? The thing is, rather than ask, uh, a lot of us right now, as I'm sharing all this, uh, you may be thinking, wow, it's a full-time job. And there's a lot of work to do. The immediate question that business owners always ask, is it worth my time, my money, and my effort? I would like us to think of it from the other way around uh, is that is what you produce in terms of your videos, your posts, is it worth your customer's time, money and effort? So that means if you make a video and you, you require people to spend two minutes or 20 minutes or two hours to consume the material that you put online, is what you produce even worth their two hours? <laughs> And that's very important because if you are going to spend time and money and effort uh, to produce content, then you might as well make it worth your customer's effort. And uh, if you find that the take-up rate is not good, means uh, your video is not even worth the, the, 20, the, the, the 20 minutes that you expect out of them. Yeah. So then when it comes down to professional equipment, the truth is actually don't need them. Right now, if you have a pretty decent webcam uh, and 
some of you may have heard of this ring light, right? That kind of thing you can easily buy online, Lazada, seriously, not more than a few hundred dollars. There's no, uh, you do not need those few thousand dollars that are equipment. Trust me, you really don't need. And, um, and what's important is the quality of the content that you're sharing. And if people are like, you, you need to, you need to have so much quality until people listen to you. Uh, take out notepad and start writing one. Eh. Uh, that one is called quality content. But if they are like, I hear this from 10,000 other people, then your quality, your content is not quality. Really. Mm. So then uh, the, one of the key concepts is if you are going to be a leader in your industry, you must demonstrate your authority. So don't tell them your authority, but you need to demonstrate. And some of you actually have um, some skills uh, that, that can do live demonstration. I know some people who started doing, uh, taking live case studies during, during uh, webinars or Facebook lives. So you have people actually ask you questions and you straight away Q&A answer. Then, then people can see that you are really authority or on, or people can see now whether you know your shit or not, right? So that if you can, you show them your methods and don't hold back. You actually show them how you do it, even all the behind the scenes. Because the concept in the air era is if you are so good, then you just tell me the answer. Because in the past, it's like, you like, oh, you want to know, you must pay first. Uh, then this, this method doesn't work anymore. And you must show them the truth. So that means if you, in your industry, some of the industry is a bit hey on. So that means there's some black hat uh, strategies or things like that. Here's the funny thing. Uh, it's like the more you reveal the truth behind the, behind the scenes, uh, it's, um, it's, it's very powerful. One. And, and people want to follow you because they feel that you're honest and you're sincere. And unlike other people who keep, keep their material under lock and key. Like, the real answer here is that if you base it on your own marketing, you're very simple. Because to bring like a thousand people, I can tell you, I personally don't know a thousand people. Like. So then how do I bring in these people? The key here is called referrals and shares. So it comes back to very core BNI concepts. Like. It's called giver skin. Everything that I said so far is how much are you giving or how much are you holding back? So then if you keep giving, people want to come. And uh, you also find that people are very happy to give you referral because they know that if their friend come to your webinar, you are not going to sell them anything. That they're going to have benefit and value and don't have to feel pressured that uh, like like that fellow trying to hard sell me something like that and uh, this is also one of the reasons why it's very easy to give me referrals isn't it because then a your the referral doesn't mean you spend any money that's how i get a lot of referrals okay so then when you get referrals a lot of these people are happy to share also the thing is you realize very few people will give these kind of shares on facebook or to endorse something and most of us are very scared to be seen by our friends by a hey, you helping him to sell huh? you got commission is here so then, if, if right now the thing that you are marketing for people is, is not something that, if your friend click, your friend only pay money, one, suddenly everyone is happy to share, especially if they feel that it's useful. So then uh, you must utilize this idea of referrals and shares. If it's good stuff, people will share. One. Make sure that it's free. Then uh, the other concept that uh, I want to bring up is this concept of a list. Amanda is very unique. She doesn't target the masses. So therefore, as we start to look at all these things that I have shared so far, it is, seems to be very uh, focused on getting like hundreds or thousands of people to come to a webinar, which may not apply to, to Amanda. Therefore, how can online media uh, help or support my company? The other thing that online media is great for besides lead generation is branding. Is branding. So therefore, um, I, I, this is what I call purpose and proof. And this one, everyone can use it, but it's, it's applicable for Amanda too. Because purpose is, why do we do this? Because if we set up our business to earn people's money, uh, then that's not a very good reason why we start our business. Ma. Chances are that was not the real reason. You started your business because actually there is a specific group of people that you want to help. So then in the video, you need to be able to express this. And this kind of video is not designed to get you, be, to get you sales. Huh? It's designed to communicate with people uh, what, what is going on and why you do this. And uh, it's also, the other one is called proof. And you need to prove that you walk the talk. So right now in my webinars, if I'm telling people, hey guys, you all don't have to everyday count money, don't count all right, go and give free, give free. Then I need to prove that I walk the talk. Ma. So if I don't put my webinars for free on YouTube, then people will say, oh, yeah, she say only, but in the end, she just wants to sell our shit, right? Then, so then you have to keep proving it. You don't need people to buy, but uh, you kind of need people to know that you are doing this in the background. And some of us have traits, uh, even people like Jeremy Heng also. Your, your, your trait is very, uh, how to say, infrastructure. It's very back-end. So the customer doesn't see it. 
they only see the product or the outside service ma. so then you can actually use social media to to show like oh this is the effect that my product or my service has done for supermarket industry or for like logistic industry so you can share all this uh and it's very important uh i want to share this quick thing that happened to one of my he's not really my client i didn't take him he he this insurance agent shared with me that they came up, uh, he, he said he watched my webinar. Then he said, uh, May, I heard you say, ask me to give back. So I told my team, we are going to take a percentage of our earnings and donate to charity. And then we do it in the customer's name. Then I asked him, uh, why do you do it in the customer's name? He said, oh, we are giving back. Oh. Then I said, okay, you hold on. Uh. If you want to give back and donate money to a uh, charity, why don't you do it in your own name? Then he told me, oh, because uh, we can get the customer a tax relief then the customer will know that we did this on their behalf. Then I said, oh, okay, you did this not to give back. You did this so that you can tell your customers what I did for you. So that means it's like, uh, it's a concept of CSR. That means CSR, you realize uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, right, was not set up to, to give money back to the world. It was set up to make Bill and Melinda Gates look good. That means uh, we are, because they could have given money, uh, you write them a check of $5 million, this is called giving back. Right? But now I want to give back and look good. So then the customer is also very smart nowadays. And uh, so when he said he was going to give back, I asked him, is this what your customer wants? Or is this what you want? Then you just do it to look good. Yeah. Right, so that's why walking the talk is extremely important right now. Uh, there are millions of people watching us. Last time it's maybe a few thousand people. Now we have millions of people watching us when you choose to go online. And that's why you really must walk the talk. And if you say give, you have to give. Quite a few of you asked about the frequency of posts. Then the honest question that we want to ask everyone is, do you open shop every day? Do you open shop every day? Because if you own a shop at Amokyo Hub, you cannot some days open, some days to open. So the fact is, if you are doing this, fact is it has to be conceptually it's every day. But even I also don't post every day. I'm also very tired. So then it's, it can be, but we are looking at consistencies of like three, four times a week. And uh, some, some of the things that you all can look at is to vary things. Don't always be webinar. Ma. Sometimes it can be articles or it can even be a quick share or a, a link share. You can share links of uh, useful resources, but cannot just post the link. La. You can just sort of tell them how to use it or why is this link uh, useful. So then even if it doesn't lead to a sale or somebody buying a product from us, but the fact is we are in the business of supporting that customer. Ma. Yeah, so then we do whatever is uh, required. Uh. There's uh, one of my clients, is uh, she rents out properties in KL for overseas clients. And one of the things she does is she even posts a lot of useful information for expats who are living in KL. Because she's saying that if you come and live in KL, you must be happy to stay here. Then I serve my landlords well by having their tenant remain in KL and be happy. So then she's not a tour guide, but yet she's posting like, hey, by the way, these are the four places you can go to safely try our local food. Then all the Scandinavian people, those Norwegian people all go and click and they all go and eat. Then they somehow feedback to her and say, you are the most supportive uh, property agent I have ever met. You see? So that means it's nothing to do with rental or properties or making money, but yet she's supporting her landlord. So these are some of the ways in which this air era means that we need to broaden our minds as to what do we mean by giving? And are you still willing to give even though it doesn't result in an immediate sales ROI? which a lot of people have that resistance to. La. That's what I, I see. Social media is not a new activity that you add to your business. Uh, I realize a lot of businesses are like, oh, because now COVID-19, we have to go online, we have to do social media. It is not activity. It's actually, it's a new mindset. That means we are, the, it's social media and it's not sales media. So that part, that's the part that everyone needs to get super clear. If not, you are the, the annoying advertisement that everyone wants to skip. Then, um, and you cannot accomplish any result with one video or one post. Uh, I've had, I, I did one to ones with some of you and you shared with me that you are make, getting prepared to make this one big giant Hollywood blockbuster video. Then I'm a bit like, mm, you can actually save a lot of money. Don't do that blockbuster video. You take your phone like that pie and tell them, you know, if you just want to share a quick thing about uh, some a trend that I'm noticing with businesses right now. You just talk like that three minutes, I uh, got people watch on, but make sure your content is really useful and is really helping one and not to sell one. So uh, actually you can do cheap free videos. Articles can be free. Just express what you what you experience in your work enough already. Yeah, and the third conclusion is that there is no end to social media. A lot of people think social media is like you build a highway. Then you, well, you spend a lot of money, spend effort, build one highway. After that, you can relax, Jack. There is no end to social media. There's a reason why it's called traffic. Traffic means every day the car is going on that social media. So then 
can we ever end that traffic? Cannot. This is the new way that we connect with our audience. So in fact, social media, you know, in BNI, we always say that networking is part of the business. It's not an activity that we add into the business. It is the business. So traffic is the business. And from now on, this is the new way that everyone do business will be. Yeah, then, um, yeah, and social media has to be for our customer benefit. It cannot be for our benefit. It cannot be sales media. You see, uh, the thing about doing videos, right? I think we all now see that it's really not about doing that one video, right? You can do you can do a movie blockbuster. You can spend a lot on it, right? Um, and the thing is, especially in these times, right? You need to really match that with your what kind of budget you have on hand. Because you see, videos holds whatever you do, copywriting. Ultimately, this is what I call content. But you know, content cannot go without marketing. And if you bust your whole budget on making a blockbuster movie, which is the content, but then you don't have a marketing strategy behind it, then that's all there is. It's just a content. It's just going to sit there in your library and it's not going to bring you any results. We're not, talking, we're not even talking about sales or conversions, that kind of thing. Uh. We're just talking about it sitting there, but you have no freaking idea what to do with it and how to even use it to, you know, impact people, reach the right audience, that, that kind of thing, all only a top one. It's just content sitting there. But then what happens after that? What is the long-term strategy after that? How committed are you to making that strategy work? How committed are you to your outreach? How committed are you to keep doing it? The biggest question here is not about how much money you spend on it. The biggest question here is how much time are you willing to commit to it? If you are going to time, spend your time and your resources on a content outreach, I'm not just talking, talking about video. I'm talking about video content posts. If you're going to spend time and money on a content outreach, right? it better be for the long term and you better be consistent about it you better be in for the long run accountant i mean to some people it's like they they may say it's, it's very boring it's accountancy but in today's context especially in 2020 there are a lot of unique uh challenges that business owners are facing this year which they don't normally face such as what if i suddenly drop headcount for example how does this affect accounting it is very interesting topic that a lot of people want to click and learn so that's one. Uh, others could be, are there some, I, I don't know, I'm not your trade. Lah, like, are there some certain industries that is more hit than others during this COVID period? And what do they really need to know about filing their tax next year, which they should know now? So that next year, they don't end up going and file some extra useless tax, which they don't need to pay on. You know, that kind of thing. So these are, these are information that actually people are dying to learn. For example, now a lot of people trying to jump on the bandwagon, try to borrow money, but there's a lot of things that actually they don't know that, that, um, that actually a lot of other unethical loans people out there are taking advantage of people's anxiety and fear. So then the challenge here is, Russell, are you willing to come out and tell the truth? Tell them that do not be duped by someone dangle a, a beautiful uh, fruit in front of you, but actually you could be putting yourself in much deeper debt than you are right now. Then isn't that very bad? Can you come out and, and educate the audience? Yeah. yeah, this is what I mean. Yeah. yeah, so it's um, it's like uh, I don't know. Some people say hey, I'm not so weta or what, but it's it's not you know. It's like um, since you are such an expert, and right now the world is in a mess. Uh, all the more we need to come out and uh, maybe assure some people and give them the truth. Uh. I think the world has been going with a lot of like nonsense, package rubbish uh, for a very long time already. So then, if we are good business owner who don't do it just for the money, we do it because we support people. In fact, when we talk about a zero dollar marketing strategy, it is really at the core. Uh, it is about nurturing your audience. Nurturing and educating your audience over an extended period of time in bite-sized pieces. Makes no sense for you to talk about 100 things when they maybe lost attention at the fifth thing. You want to release your content to the right platform in bite-sized pieces slowly over time. So that people, right, first they listen to, the, to, to, to your first five tips and they're like, oh, Wow, that's interesting. Who's this guy? I want to know a bit more about them. That's your first contact, ma. Your second video, your third, your fourth. You release at least once per week. If you can do more than that once per day, I think it's a bit extreme, right? But once every other day or at least once a week, then what happens is that you are nurturing the audience. Every week, they listen to you one week. The second week, the third week, the fourth week. After that, it becomes a habit for them. Uh, oh, yeah, this week or a new video. I haven't gone and see. Uh, right? Because it's a topic that relates to them. Uh, so they begin to get hooked to you. 
like that. So that's why I say it's a step-by-step -step nurturing of your target audience. This is, at first, it will just probably be your warm audience. Like, that means your existing clients, your existing community. But it gives them a reason to share this content to other people in their community who they think these people can benefit from just listening to you. Not ask them to commit to you, listen to you only so that they can benefit, they get interested in you, they start following you. When I first got started, I tell you, uh, my brother took three years to convince me to make my first video. Nowadays, it is possible for me to produce up to 20 clips in one day because they're very short clips. Man. So I create all my topics beforehand, then they action go there, I just talk already. So now it's very easy for me, but it's, it's like muscle memory. You do a lot of times, you're okay already. But at the beginning, what I suggest uh, is that if you can take one day out just to do your filming, because the first few times when you film, you are scared and then you pice and whatever, right? So it will take some time on okay? So you must be kind to yourself. Lah. Okay, but the if in one day you can come up with four good topics. So the tip here is remember I said you think about who is your, your target customer, the one that you, you like to serve the most. And ask yourself right now what are the top four problems? And what are the top things that you can, sometimes it's a small tip that you can tell them, by the way, you all can go and click on this and actually it will solve your problem. Tell them, give them for free. So then you come up with four things and you just shoot four clips, enough really. Because why you one week, you one week redu release one clip, you enough already. One week, one clip. Then you can set like maybe Friday. Every Friday, 3 p.m., you just post one. So you one month, take one day out to film, you also okay. Mm. Then you take some time to write a good copy behind it just you don't need to be a professional copywriter sometimes it's just being honest though. just say that uh, i made this video for a business owner in the fmb industry because you have this uh, challenge please watch this video and like and share if you think it's useful like that carry all right like yeah. it, in fact in fact in that copy right i notice a lot of people when they start posting this stuff because it's still quite um when it comes to call to action uh, sometimes it's very common for people to start thinking like oh if you if you if you find this uh, if you find this is good uh, uh, call me at this number <laughs> uh, email me here this day Nobody and the will other. Call you one. yeah that those are the kind of uh over languaging that is that is what comes across as salesy to people the fact is right when people first watch your videos even with your warm community uh, when they first watch your things right or first read your posts uh you are re I mean, seriously, la, are you expecting them to well, after read one post, read this straight away, contact you? Uh, not so not so much in these days. La. So that's why, if anything, a call to action should be just be like, no, look, if you found this to be insightful, useful in any way, my only request is if can, can you share it with somebody else that you think this will be a contribution to? This is the best idea you can do already. And mm. out of that, right, this is how people start actually getting in contact with you. You didn't ask them to call you. But then after doing, after if they started to get addicted to you, uh, it is only sooner or later, uh, they will start going like, hey, you know, they start messaging you directly. They're like, I really like this. I really like that, what you said. And do you think it could help me here, there and everywhere, right? So you don't say, you don't, you don't go out there and say, hey, contact me. No, no. In this new world, you don't do that kind of thing. In this new world, what you do is, you know, look, if you found this useful, help me to spread the message. Say in whatever way you, you want to say, like help me to spread the message, yeah. to touch more lives. Yeah. Right? Y'all need to be convinced that you yes. really will work on they, yeah. they really will own self help that you Let me say that I want to thank Joel and May because I've been working with them. So they have been consistently or again, uh, the word consistently come out or rather uh, feeding me bite-sized information on what I should do and how I should do this. It's not an easy process. It was only recently that I decided and I came to this conclusion that what I was doing is actually communicating your business and you to your clients and not just taking photography. And it's not, it's not an easy process because it really took me a while to come up with the concept. Actually, oh, if you're starting out, it's really not easy. I, I told Joe, I actually tried my first attempt at doing it and it flopped. Okay. And I'm a videographer. Eh. I do videos there. Eh. So you see, it's not easy, but um, you can do what May just said, do something short, uh, do a posting that's short, uh, a short information, don't have to be very long. For those that are with me on Facebook, you see that during the first month of lockdown, I was consistently every day posting some photos that was when I went out, uh, legally or illegally. Uh. Um, and that actually led me to some training opportunities. And in the first place, I posted it not because I was trying to rope, rope things in, but it was a result of what my consistent posting led to.
every outreach that you do, right, it can be real, it can be personal, but also does it build to you? Now, my my the way that I do it uh, is only because, right, I know for myself and because I've been in MNCs before and I've been in a hiring position before, right? Mm-hmm. And sometimes when people apply for position, what do you do? Google them, la? Facebook them, la? stalk them first, la? right? And you see, people like to form first impressions. Uh, even today, I'm not talking even about like hiring positions or anything, but let's say if it was someone who was just checking you out for the first time, if they decide they are so intrigued with you, what they will start to do is to Google you, Facebook you, Twitter you, LinkedIn you, wherever they can find you, and form their own impression of you. And so then is it important that whatever you post, right, makes you look real, relatable, yet professional at the same time. Which actually brings us to uh, not just what you post or what you shouldn't post. And I tell you, the number mm. one thing that you should never ever post uh, is what I call a complaint. Ah, yes. You should never ever post anything that is like, wow, this stupid company uh, or this idiot that uh, who was on the thing. <laughs> I can tell you, it, it, it says a lot more about us as people uh, than the person that you're complaining about. The more heartland, the more normal, the more hello you are, right, the better. And, and uh, even if it's okay, if you use Hokkien or you just use broken English, uh, it's fine, you know. What you don't want to do, uh, especially those of you all who are in insurance and property, uh, the last thing you want to do is to dress up until like, well, Armani suit, like, everything, uh, they sit with uh, what the marble background, try to show people. Unless that is your branding, like, like then lock. If that is your branding, that's the kind of thing you want to go for. Sure, sure. Go full out. 100% No, go. I tell you, then not only a appeals to, uh, to, to older people, people. Ah, it's that's that's that older people who are still dying for like the financial freedom uh, I want to be millionaire I can tell you uh, <laughs> millennials don't care about that kind of thing right. you want longevity right do not go for that that wow I want to be a multi-millionaire yeah. If you sell that, I can tell you your target audience is like those loud right. ones. Young yeah. people don't buy this. That brings up a good point because yes. what you post online, the persona that you put online, right, or whatever you want to post online, yes, it should be real, but it should also speak to your specific target audience. So you need to be clear, at least for yourself, however long you've been in business, you can see a trend of who usually engages you and do you like them or not, right? And if, if you set yourselves on a target audience, right, then you need to think from what kind of things would they like to see? Would they want to see? That kind of thing, right? Then you build your online persona, posting content around that. It's an abundance mindset. I think uh, in the earth era, we are very scarcity mindset. Every time, put one hour of your time must have ROI. Put 1,000 <laughs> of your money must have ROI. And uh, that's an earth mindset. In the air mindset, is like you realize that uh, the world is so big. Yeah. There's really 7 billion people. If you really go out and surf, uh, you really can surf 7 billion people. Man. By, by your action, it cannot. But if you put some useful information out there, technically, it can surf 7 billion people. So what is stopping you really? Everyone is going to have their own style. And in yeah. this new age, right? In this new mm-hmm. age, it's like you, you just cannot, cannot hide. Lah. Cannot hide right? If you really want a solid outreach, you cannot hide. You need to really put yourself out there and communicate. It is a form of actually uh, content production and marketing, right? Is a communication. It is a form of communication with the world that is contactless, but it is with the world. Yeah, it opens... Uh, it opens a lot more possibilities than just your community, just your family, your immediate radius. So you got to look at it that way. Mm. It's mm. opening yourself out to the world for people to have a chance to know you. <laughs> in a more relatable example, yeah. in the four webinars I've done, we I've closed clients from, from Qatar. I got clients mm. in Brazil. I got clients from China, KL. It's like uh, when I was operating here at Busura Street, uh, I don't have this kind of clientele. In the last two months, uh, these people dropped from Sky. Yeah, yeah. Really. Yeah. But it's had like, she not done the first webinar, then this will not have happened. No? Yeah. Mm. So it's a journey. Yeah. La. 